Um, thanks to Matt Timmons for hosting this open press event. I feel really lucky to be able to read you some things um, along with Gordon Fehler, the um, legendary curator editor of Goss PDF. Um, so I'll be reading from Hareheart's Flip, um, which Gordon put out on Goss PDF. This is also a, a screen. It's not a quilt or um, anything like that. It's supposed to be a screen because Matt Timmons said that there were no, there was no uh, screen or projection available, so I decided to make one, and this is what I made. Um, and thanks, Ben, for helping. Me. <laughs> so I'll read first some um, thoughts about bed sheets and screens. Since we don't have a projector or a movie screen, here is a bed sheet. The screen is made of threads. It has flowers on it. The flowers aren't moving. It fits a full size. Parts of Hareheart's flip was written on a bed, in bed. A bed sheet like this one reflects only what is suppressed, hidden, secret. I don't know if a bed sheet is opposite of the internet. A bed sheet requires human memory as opposed to computer memory, if you look at a bed sheet long enough, so many things will appear. Sex, birth, death. Unlike the internet, bodies in the flesh are present in the face of a bed sheet. Hearts have buttons too. Hearts can be manipulated. A face can be forwarded and shared. Fat face forward, I can share my cunt with you. Don't ever throw away your bed sheets. They have more memories than a computer will ever know. So this is um, this is called Pussies Are Worthless Terrors. And this was done. This is also from her. I mean, all the things that I'm reading are from Herhart's flip, but. Um, this is Pussies Are Wordless Terrors, Friday, March 7th, 2008, 11.52 a.m., zero comments. I don't know, and this is all addressed to this person um, named Hare, and I was flip, and I would write Hare these, um, these letters on blogspot.com. <laughs> I don't know what it is that makes certain words hidden in me that want to hide from you, but you see it clearly under the microscopic fracture of no sound when talking to me on the cell phone. You make crevices for rent when hearing you shuffle through space to look for a cell phone charger. It wasn't in the car, so where was it? I like how you do that, look for things, and talk to me like I've been holding it this whole time. Your taffy shadow making its way through the door, call me more. Your, vo your voicemails more memorable than audiobook, than any audiobook worth archiving with a shovel. I'd love to see your spring break 2008 next week, but I might be tied to a bed. Every day, learn how to love without genders, though I might be terrified of one over the other. Pussies are wet, wordless terrors hiding all the time. Natalia told me about textile rituals in northern Russia, male and female stitches echoing difference in the fabric. Even stitches have gender. I'm a little boy in love with men, or I'm a little girl in love with women, and it feels very fancy. I wonder why there are no bathroom signs for it, or embroidery on napkins to celebrate it. This one's called Bobby Brown introduces himself as Whitney Houston's husband, and Dalai Lama has no idea what he's talking about. 
<laughs> Friday, March 21, 2008. Five, 3.45 a.m., zero comments. This is also based on this um, YouTube video of, it's really short, it's like under a minute. Well, maybe that's long now in terms of time now. <laughs> but, um, it was this really, it's this really great video of Bobby Brown at the airport who like sees the Dalai Lama walking across the parking lot or something like that and he's like, hey, I'm Bobby Brown, I'm Whitney Houston's husband. And the Dalai Lama is like, cool, I don't know who you are. Um, His Holiness the Dalai Lama don't know who Bobby Brown is. I feel this way about most people about all the Bobby Browns in the world who expect you to know that he's the husband of Whitney Houston. <laughs> I'm too broke to go on a meditation retreat, so I sit here YouTubing how to meditate and found this one with Bobby Brown trying to holler at his holiness. I guess this is a kind of meditation. I guess trying to holler at someone is part of the practice in action. There's a Tibetan nunnery in northern India that always needs volunteers to teach you to teach English. All you need is your own airfare or cruise to get there. In some cases, all you need is thousands of dollars to volunteer. <laughs> Buddhism isn't free or fair. Emptiness is neither here nor there. Compassion is a blog spread wide and thin. Suffering is how many hits your blog gets. Thus I have heard once the blessed one And this is the last one, because I can't find other ones that I want to read to you. <laughs> Pinball is a sport of punctuation. Wednesday, April 9th, 2008. 9.13 p.m., zero comments. Stockings strike a nerve in my asshole. Wait, I don't know if this is the one that I wanted to read. <laughs> no, I'm serious. <laughs> Yeah, this is the one. <laughs> okay. Um, what it feels like to have itchy nerves in your asshole is, own, is owned again by metaphor. Am I bored of all this trendy irony worn as haircuts and t-shirts? Someone said that the semicolon is scary. I don't understand how a semicolon can get scary. Brackets are scary, like the minus sign. Semicolons are excessive upgrades on a house. So basically, you're stuck in a psych word in Philly. Welcome to my childhood, where everything began as disorder. Where for almost a year, I lived in a garage because of all the schizos and manic depressives living in the main house. And that, that's in reference to my parents who, um, who owned and operated boarding care facilities for people with um, all kinds of things going on. Tell the paramedic to rush you to Providence. Tell them I'm waiting for you in mint green scrubs and Air Jordans like a breakdancing video. Tell them I'm alive beneath heavy footsteps above this blog, wanting to see you without sentiment, but as a curse that softens like couch cushions after you get up from sitting on it. As you said, we chase after sentences and your last blog post seems so far away.